I'm not going to let them cut me off on time. In fact, if anything, <laughs> it'll go a little longer. So anyway, I think I'm going to get introduced here officially, and then, um, then from there we will, we will proceed. So I think John West is introducing me. So I'll introduce who's introducing me. This is John Anthony West. <laughs> I don't know. I've got one on here. I'll give you one. Okay. So, um, uh, the only trouble is, this introduction to Robert is, goes back, what, now close on to 20 years, and introducing him correctly will take most of his time up. So, <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to manage this now. But anyway, a little potted history that I developed the Sphinx theory on the <clears throat> basis of the one single observation by our the genius with the unpronounceable name, R.A. Shrala Dulubic, and um, developed it, and there it sat for years, 10 years, and written into the serpent in the sky. And letters to geologists brought back either nothing or abuse. And one day I befriended um, a man named Robert Eddy, who was teaching English at Schrock's University. And one day we got talking, and he said, you know, this." Um, a symbolist theory is really interesting and it should be more public and I agreed and he said well is there anything I can do to help and then instantly I said yeah find me an open-minded geologist to look into the water weathering and with a kind of a laugh I said you know knowing that finding an open-minded scientist of any kind was like <laughs> finding finding a fundamentalist Christian who loves his enemies and he said <laughs> <laughs> and, and Eddie said, Eddie said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I have a colleague of mine, he's young, but he's very highly credentialed, and he might be interested. So I said, okay, and I sent a raft of stuff off with him, didn't hear anything back, and Eddie said to me, he's, you don't say anything, I won't even tell you his name, you're too controversial. And so I said, okay, months and months and months went by, finally word came back, yes, this unidentified uh, geologist um, is interested, but skeptical, I mean, that's fine, that's fair. And anyway, eventually, eventually, and then he said, well, listen, he's not going to touch this for a while because he's up for tenure, and if, <laughs> <laughs> if they find out that he's helping you in what effectively is the, the quest for, within inverted quotes, Atlantis, he's not going to get his tenure. All of a sudden, there was shock, and now he was up for tenure, and then we could move. And I gave a talk at Boston University, which went down quite well to faculty and interested students. And, and we went back, and Shock was again very, very cautious. But uh, we went back to his place, and we had a dinner. I guess it was Eddie's place, and then we had a dinner. And there was this tall, gangly guy with a long hair. So that was already a good sign in, uh, in university. <laughs> And after dinner, again, we were kind of sparring between us, cautiously, cautiously, and the subject of Darwinian evolution came up, and I said, as a test question, Stephen Jay Gould, who some of you may know, uh, or know about, deceased now, and I said, well, what do you think of Stephen Jay Gould? And Chuck said, oh, he's a bozo. So I knew I had a friend. <laughs> and we've taken it since then, and I've ruined Chuck's life. Um, yes. There he was happily looking at fossils and going to Greenland and geologizing. And here he is in the middle of this terrible controversy. But you see, he's now grown a beard, and he's completely unprofessorial looking. And I introduce him to you now in his metamorphosed guise. Uh, thank you. Uh.